it's your girl Tania. and if you are not subscribed subscribe now if you are subscribed you know i love you i love you i love you and i told you guys i was gonna be back make sure you like this video comment because you know i talk back so i came back on this one because my last video was about me calling the police on the narcissist but this one is about the narcissist calling the police on me Narcissists play so many games and that's why I told you guys I have so many different stories because they come in different ways. So this particular time, this narcissist called the police on me because he was being petty. He was going tit for tat because I called on him. He was like, I'm going to call on you. So he figured if he knocked at the door and I don't answer this time and so that I won't call the police on him, he was going to lie. So when he knocks at my door, he hears everything. He hears the TV. He hears kids he hears everything so when he started knocking like that i was basically trying to get the kids like settle them down like go in the room baby go do this and they started crying because they didn't want to like they were in their comfort zone and i was like no no just go in the room lay down go watch this tv and i wanted to take them out the living room because that's where the door is at so he was basically like um hearing them cry and he used that and told the police like oh i think that um my kids is in the house by themselves and I think that um, there's nobody there and I feel that they're in danger. Can you go and see? So he sent the LAPD to my house. Uh, how could you? That is so low. And you know you lying. And two, you know, before he did that, he was he sent me a text message and was like, I'm coming over if you don't let me in um, to could play that game. And he was like, um, like basically a threat, right? But he knows how not to text a threat because of course he'd been in jail for threatening somebody's life before the girl, the ex-girlfriend. So he would pick and choose his words. It's like people do know what and what not to say. When I went to the police station, matter of fact, to um, make the police report on him in the daytime, when I told them that, they, that he kept coming to my house, it was a lady there. And she was like talking to the police telling the police, I don't even know people could do this. She was like, what can I say to somebody in a text without it being a threat? Because I want to text somebody something and I want to make sure that I'm not going to go to jail for it. I looked at her like, people really do stuff like that. But she was trying to, you know, protect herself, right? So that's what, that's why God made me seem that because he wanted me to know this narcissist is like that. What had happened was he was like choosing his words in the text message and he was like, um, you know, two can play that game. Um, I just want to see my kids. I love my kids. He made sure he put that in there so that he wouldn't seem like a threat, right? So when the police came, of course, I was there, like he knew. And I opened up the door, and it was like three or four police. They didn't even come like that when I told them that he was knocking my door down, saying that he wanted to kill me. And um, they were like, oh, did you see a weapon? I said, how can I see a weapon? I'm not opening up the door. If somebody says things like that, oh, well, did he say it over the phone or did he text it to you? Do you have proof? They were BS, right? So three or four police came in. I said, come and look. I said, so now since y'all here, won't y'all stay here too? Because after y'all leave, he's probably looking like how he was last time. I said, and you know, you guys could be a witness of what he does. And you guys could be here. You guys won't take so long. They was like, whoa, 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 we're here to help you. We just, you know, when it's about kids, we have to, um, I know you have to be serious about it because it's kids involved. Yeah, but kids was also here when he was coming, knocking my door down too. And you guys didn't come this deep. So they were like, look, this is what you do. Like, you know, he was telling me what court building to go to, how we could get it fast and the restraining order fast. Don't go back to downtown and all this stuff, right? So after that, I ended up calling him myself now. So now the narcissist was probably was like so happy. Like it probably got him off that I called him. And I was like, I need to holler at you. He like, what's up? I'm like, look, don't play with me when it comes to my kids talking about some their home alone and all that. I said, because at the end of the day, you know, I take care of my kids. And you know that I'm always here at the house. That's why you always coming, knocking at my door, bum. I'm like, so at the end of the day, like, 
what is the problem? Like, you know, like, you're not going to keep doing this. He like, no, because I'm not never giving up on you and my kids. And I don't want you to tell my kids later on in life that I wasn't trying to be in their life. No, you're not trying to be in their life. You're trying to see what I got going on. Because every time you came to my house, you wasn't interacting with the kids. You was worried about me. You was worried about getting back into my pants. You was worried about who I was talking to, who was following me on Instagram. You would bring up irrelevant stuff that had nothing to do with kids. So I could never really take him serious. So anyway, fast forward. He was just like, well, um, you caught the police on me. So I was like, you sound like a little kid, like a little girl. I'm like, and you know what? It's not even no point talking to you. But I'm just letting you know, yeah, two can play that game. And one day I'm not going to be here at this house and you're going to be looking stupid. You're not going to know where I'm at. And now look, you don't know where I'm at and you won't know where I'm at. And by the grace of God, if you try to come for me, you will get stopped dead in your tracks. And that's all it is to it. And I've always been like the type that would talk mess. But when I say that I was in fear, it was just because I was thinking of, oh, when I do this, what can happen? I wasn't in fear to talk my crap. After I talk my crap, I'm in fear of what's going to happen now because I know he's going to be after me. And I was really in fear because I had the kids around. If I was by myself, I would probably be fighting him and dead because we fought before when the kids were when the kids weren't around and when we didn't have three kids with each other, we was fighting like cats and dogs. And it was just like, you know, nowadays, I don't want my kids to grow up and say, oh, my mom was getting abused and I'm affected by that. Or, you know, um, I used to see my mom get hit or my mom was stressed out when I was this age because of him. No. So I just told myself, you know what? I got to get on. I don't care. You know, I can't be in fear and I have to be a strong mother. When I was young or, you know, just growing up, like back, back, back in the day, like in the 90s when I was growing up, I felt like, my mom was like the strongest thing ever, right? Like she was so tough, you know, she barely let me see her cry. I probably only seen her cry like once. But these days, kids see everything from social media. They hear stuff, grown people be talking about stuff that they never would have talked about around me when I was young. And you know, it's just like a different day that we living in. And so I just don't want to be the one and I don't want to be the reason why my kids is a certain way. And so, um, that's just that on that. You know, I just want to let you guys know, like, narcissists are real. They will flip the script. They are very emotional and they are in fear, you know, and by them being in fear, it makes the whole situation like fearful because of the things that they do and the things that they say. And so I just want to just warn you guys of what they do. I will come back with another story because it's numerous stories. Um... And yeah, we're going to get through this. You know, I am here to help whoever has any questions. If you want to say anything, feel free. If you have a question, if you want me to email you, if you want to email me, just ask me for my email. It could be confidential. Anything like I'm here like to help and I'm here just for support and just for confidentiality reasons, you know. And so um, don't feel embarrassed. You aren't alone. It's a lot of us dealing with this and who have went through this and a lot of women won't talk about it because it's just like not a, a popular topic to talk about, but it needs to be spoken about. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next video.